Hi guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. So for today's video, you guys are going to hang out with me on a Sunday where I am testing out a brand new foundation. So I am going to be trying out the Bite Beauty Change Maker Supercharged Micellar Foundation. Very excited about this. It sounded like something that I would very much be interested in. It's been a while since I've done a full day foundation wear. I do talk about in the video in the beginning how I'm also reviewing the pressed powder. Warning you now, I am not. <laughs> I completely picked up the wrong box. This is not my color in the slightest. So I'm just going to return that and we're only going to be focusing on the foundation today, which is okay. This is what I was most excited for anyways. So if you wanna see my thoughts and my experience with this foundation, then just keep watching. So yesterday I took a trip to Sephora and in there they had the brand new Bite Beauty complexion products. A lot of complexion products have come out recently. There's a couple of concealers that I have my eye on. I do have my eye on that new Tom Ford foundation. I haven't bit the bullet for that one yet. I'm trying to be more mindful of my purchases for my channel in that if it's not really going to directly benefit my channel, like I'm not going to post a review on it or feature it in a video then I'm not going to buy it because last year I spent so much money on makeup which was fine but I feel like I could have spent a lot less had I been more mindful of what I actually wanted to put on my channel and what was going to be beneficial to you guys. Last year it was a mindset of just buy, 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 get, get, get all of the new, new releases and I'm trying to be a little bit more strategic, save some money, adulting, you know, yeah. Especially with complexion products because of my job, like I can't do a wear test every day. I can only do wear tests on the weekend. So I wasn't going to purchase this just because I'm going away next week and anyways, so the review for this one have been up for like another two weeks. This was available at my local Sephora, so it is Sunday. We're gonna do a wear test. I'm currently in my PJs Sunday morning. Probably will be in my PJs all day because I got work to do at home. But anyways, let's get into it. So I purchased the new Bite Beauty Change Maker Complexion products. Now they also came out with a primer where you choose the primer that is best for your skin type. They did not have that at my Sephora, so we're just gonna actually go with the color primer. Products. So the first thing that we have here, and I haven't even opened these yet, is the Change Maker Supercharged Micellar Foundation. So let's go over the details of this guy as I open it up. So this is a clean, long-wearing foundation with gentle micellar technology that mimics skin texture for a natural and flawless finish. That micellar technology is what really drew me to this foundation because it's so good for the skin. Uh, it's very gentle. I love my micellar water to remove my makeup and I have very sensitive skin as you can see the wrong product can make my face break out very easily my pores get clogged very easily with makeup products so hopefully this is very light on my skin and is good for a lot of long time wear the coverage is medium with a natural finish now that is speaking my language for all types of skin types the highlighted ingredients are maki berry which is an antioxidant rich ingredient that helps nurture your complexion and micellar technology which mimics skin texture for a smooth non cakey look. I love foundations that have a skin like finish. Usually with those types it's not as long wearing but I just like how that looks on the skin. Alright so I think we got into the major details of that. So it feels very small. In it you get one fluid ounce and this is made in Italy. Oh price by the way $39.50. I got mine in the shade M55. Honestly have no clue if this is the right shade for me. I just kind of quickly looked through the shades and picked this one up. So it might be too dark on me, honestly. I'm a little bit fearful of that. It is the lightest shade in the medium range. And really quickly, I'm going to show you some swatches comparing it to other foundations. This is Bite Beauty in M55. This is Pat McGrath Light Medium 9. This is La Mer the Soft Fluid in Natural 12. And then we have Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk in 4.5. Very simple, clean packaging. Love the squeezy tube. Here's what the texture is looking like. Not a super liquidy foundation. It's a little bit more thick. Oh, and if I didn't mention this, my skin is sensitive, acne prone, and dry. Right now, I have the Smashbox Photo Finish primerizer on my skin and that's it and a little bit of regular moisturizer so the way i like to apply my foundation i use my fingers 
to spread it. So this color is a warm undertone. I have more of a neutral undertone, but I do prefer a warm undertone over a cool undertone. It's actually, this is a pretty dang good color for me. Good job. Maybe like a touch, touch too dark, smidge too warm. Okay, so just with that light layer, I did get a little bit of coverage. There is a natural sheen to it and it's looking really nice. So when I was like swatching the colors, the shade lighter than this just seemed just a little bit too light. And this one seemed just a little bit too dark. I feel like I'm an in-between these two colors, which is always the case, right? Nothing can ever match perfectly. I'm happy I want a shade darker. Normally when I'm between two colors, I prefer to go a shade darker because I went through a phase where I preferred lighter foundations. And so now 80% of my collection, my foundations are way too light for me. So I'd rather go darker so I can mix with all of my light foundations. So this is the first layer. And honestly, you guys, it looks super duper nice. This is a really great everyday layer right here for me. You can still see my skin peeking through, but it definitely has evened everything out. It looks skin-like. It's not like powdery or matte looking on my face. It does feel a little bit sticky, so we're gonna see how it builds, but right now I would say this is a light medium coverage, so not quite hitting medium yet, but I did apply a very thin layer. So we're gonna see how this builds on the red areas on my face. Okay, so you definitely can build in those areas that need a little bit more coverage. Coverage, you're not going to surpass a medium coverage. So here's a closer look without any powder or anything. With Also what I noticed with application is that I did actually use quite a lot of product to spread it across my face. It's not one of those foundations where a little goes a long way because it is thicker. So I did have to squeeze quite a bit out, but uh, that's not really something that bothers me too much because it doesn't feel heavy on my face. I don't feel like I have a lot of product. It does definitely feel fresh. So I'm very quickly going to apply concealer and brows and we'll be back to talk about the pressed powder. But this is the Change Maker Flexible Coverage Pressed Powder. I got mine in the shade medium two. Oh, I definitely meant to get medium one. This may not. I grabbed the wrong box. I meant to get M1. This is not going to work for me. Okay, really sorry about that. This will need to be exchanged. I grabbed the wrong freaking box. All right, so I guess this really just was truly a foundation review, which is fine. There is a powder. I just don't have time to go and pick up the powder. But from reading the reviews online, it does seem to me that this is like more of a lightweight powder, not really to give you coverage, but more so to set your face, blur your face and all of that. I just feel like I completely ruined this review but things happen. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna finish the rest of my makeup and I'll be back. Okay, so this review has taken a turn. Obviously, we are without the powder in this collection, which honestly, upon thought, I probably will just end up returning the powder because I don't even really use setting powder <laughs> anyways, like on a regular basis. If I can't review it for you guys right now, then it's not gonna get used in the future. So we're just gonna stick with the foundation, which is what I was most excited about. So one thing that I noticed with the foundation is that it didn't really really fully set down. The powders that I used on my face, like the bronzer and blush, they didn't skip over the foundation at all. It didn't make the powders patchy at all, which is really nice. But dry down time was a really long time for that foundation. As I've put the powders on my face, the color products on my face, that natural sheen on the skin has definitely been lost. But typically, that's how it happens when you apply makeup. So over time, we'll see if that glow decides to come back through. But for the most part, yeah, I definitely feel like now that I have makeup on, I look like I have makeup on. Nothing bad. It's not a super duper natural finish on the skin, but it is very lightweight and it looks very good. My skin actually looks pretty blurred for the most part. You can tell that I have makeup on, but it's 
nothing bad at all. So far, I'm really liking how it looks. It seems to be a great everyday foundation. It is currently 10 a.m., so I'm just going to live my life, do as I do, and I will update you guys in a few hours. Okay, so it is a little bit past noon, so it's been about two hours, so it's time to check in. I've just been editing videos have not changed my attire so let's zoom in so here is how the foundation is currently looking my mom complimented me on how my skin looked it looks pretty natural on the skin I mean, you can definitely tell there's makeup on your skin but like clearly i'm wearing makeup but no it's not cakey looking at all it does provide a pretty good amount of coverage if i'm being honest like when i was first applying it i was like oh this is a light medium coverage but i would definitely say now that this is a true medium coverage as time has gone by it definitely has that more natural finish that it originally had it doesn't feel sticky on the face anymore and what I'm most impressed by is that it really hasn't sunken into my smile lines at all normally by now something would be happening but that has not yet happened so I'm pretty impressed let me show you how it looks on the forehead right now the nose so you can definitely still see my skin and it's not hiding any secrets or anything, but it just looks good overall. So I'm going to go on with my day and I will keep you guys updated. All right, so it is now two o'clock. So we are officially four hours into wear time, the halfway point for the day. So I wanted to give you a quick check-in before the final check-in. So overall, my skin is looking really nice. And the lighting is not the best. Smile lines are not there, which is a true testament to a good foundation. My skin overall looks really nice. My oils are starting to break through, but with my dry skin, it's in the best way possible. Like, my skin looks really good. The only type of oil buildup that I'm noticing is right around these areas, which is typically where it happens first. But as of now, it does not look bad at all. So... We're still looking really nice, people. Bye. All right. <laughs> I'll see you guys in four hours. All right. So it is 5.30. So I've been wearing the foundation for seven and a half hours. I figured that's long enough. So here is how we are looking. Seven and a half hours in. Let's zoom you on in. So you can see the redness from around my nose peeking through. And definitely I'm looking like I've been wearing this makeup for a while but honestly as a whole it looks really good i'm very impressed with how not deep my smile lines are my pores are kind of showing through here but nothing obnoxious like everything seems to have held up really well my forehead doesn't look cakey or gross my nose looks kind of gross but it always does it looks really good for seven and a half hours not too bad and it doesn't seem to have lost coverage either so obviously this is my first time wearing this foundation and I, I didn't have like a very busy day today so it hasn't been through enough trials or wear or like me actually physically leaving my house and doing something so of course I am going to have to experiment with this foundation some more but first impressions man this is a nice foundation I really like it I could see it as being a go-to everyday foundation I can't wait to continue wearing it if you have oily skin I don't think it's going to be as long wearing on you if you have dry skin this just feels really moisturizing it's not emphasizing any dryness on my skin and as time goes by the more the foundation looks like skin, if I'm being honest. Like, from the beginning of the day, I could tell I had makeup on and foundation. And now, like, the finish really looks and feels like skin. So, I'm really liking this foundation. I think it's really good. If you guys have tried this foundation, let me know your experiences with it. Are you liking it like I am? And, yeah, that's all I have for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you are not yet subscribed to my channel, I sure do hope you take the time to do so. And I will see you guys in my next video video. Bye guys. Have a good one.